So in this video, we are going to discuss the question in thermal and statistical mechanics which appeared in GATE 2007 examination. The first question is, the partition function of a single gas molecule is given to be Z alpha. The partition function of n such non-interacting gas molecule, molecule is given by. So when we are using the word non-interacting, so that means the potential energy that will disappear okay okay and uh, this uh, non interacting system of gas molecule that that's easily is dealt in a uh, idle gas uh, formalism so here we treat the particle that, uh, particle as distinguishable particles as distinguishable In principle, the particles they are not uh, distinguishable, okay? But uh, the ideal uh, gas formalism uh, that treats them as a distinguishable and uh, also treat them as non-interacting gas particles, okay? So in that case, if we are uh, having the single particle partition function that is Z1 that is equal to Z alpha, then the n particle partition function for the system of distinguishable particle that is equal to Z Z1 power n okay or that is equal to z alpha power n okay this is when particles are distinguishable okay so therefore our, here the correct option is b here but however when particles are indistinguishable for the system of indistinguishable particle the our answer will be uh, Z n that is equal to Z alpha power n divided by n factorial. But this is true when we are treating the particles as distinguishable. However, in present case, our answer will be B here. Let's take a look at the next problem. So this is a problem that is related to the uh, uh, the Carnot uh, heat engine. It's not the basically the Carnot heat engine, but it's a heat pump basically. Okay. So a heat pump working on a Carnot cycle maintains the inside temperature of a house at 22 degrees Celsius by supplying 450 kilojoule per second. If the outside temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, the heat taken in kilojoule per second from the outside air is approximately. So first of all, let's uh, uh, try to understand this problem by drawing the corresponding diagram here. So we are having uh, two bodies at different temperature. One is the one is at temperature T1, which I will call as house. Okay, here we are going to where the corresponding heat pump it will uh, reject heat. Uh, inside the uh, mean uh, in, uh, inside the house okay so this is it's a it works like a refrigerator so that mean the corresponding diagram will look like this so here t2 it's a reservoir from here it's a cold reservoir from here this heat engine or the, the pump it will uh, extract heat from the cold reservoir which is at temperature t2 now this is the cold reservoir okay so from here the engine extract heat q2 by performing a work w on the working substance okay and then it delivers a q1 amount of heat to the house okay so here uh, our objective is to uh, mean obtain as large uh, as possible value of the Q1 by uh, providing input W here. So here the coefficient of performance for the heat pump for the heat pump the coefficient of performance that is COP it is defined as the outcome okay outcome or the output you can say divided by input so here the outcome that we expect it is the as large as possible value of q1 <coughs> and input is w here 
so that's how uh, it differs from the uh, coefficient of performance of the refrigerator where the objective is to uh, remove the as long as uh, as longer uh, as a larger value of q2 okay so for the refrigerator the coefficient of performance will be q2 upon w rather than q1 upon w here because the, of the final objective for heat pump and the refrigerator they are totally different okay so let's call this as result 1 so we already know that w that is equal to q1 minus q2 okay and uh, with the help of equation 1 and 2 the coefficient of performance for the heat pump that can be written as q1 upon q1 minus q2 that is equal to 1 upon 1 minus q2 upon q1 and that is equal to t1 upon t1 minus t2 okay so what is t1 it's given uh, given as 22 degrees celsius okay it's 22 degrees celsius which is equal to uh, 295 kelvin <coughs> And uh, T2 is uh, how much? T2 is 0 degree Celsius. Okay. 0 degree Celsius. That means 273 Kelvin. Okay. So, let's write uh, this parameter here. So, we are also given the value of Q1. What is Q1? So, let me write all these uh, parameters which are given to us. Q1 is, it is 450 kilojoule per second. It's basically in the power or you can say it's 450 watt. Okay, and what else is given to us? It's the temperature, uh, temperature, T1, temperature of the interior of the house, that is 22 degrees Celsius, that is 295 Kelvin, and we are supposed uh, uh, to find the Q2, T2 is also given to us, 0 degrees Celsius, that is equal to 273 Kelvin, and Q2 is how much? We have to find it, okay. So let's see how we can find the value of the Q. Okay. So because uh, Q uh, eta, that's efficiency, you can see, or the coefficient of performance, that is uh, equal to Q1 upon W, and that is equal to T1 upon T1 minus T2. As I have just uh, worked, out, worked it out here, so by substituting a value of T1 and uh, T2, we obtain this to be equal to 295 divided by 22. Okay, it's a difference between the temperature of these two reservoirs, T1 and T2. That's a difference of 22 units. Okay, so let me call this result as uh, equation 3. Okay, now because W is equal to, so from this equation, W is equal to Q1 upon eta, Q1 upon eta. So, Q1 is already known to us, that is 450 uh, kilojoule per second divided by eta, that is equal to 295 divided by 22. And when you evaluate this number, this will come out to be equal to 33.56 kilojoule per second, okay. So, therefore, uh, Q1 minus Q2, it's known to us that Q1 minus Q2, that is equal to W. So, Q1 is known, uh, known to us, W is known to us, so from here I can calculate uh, the value of Q2, that is equal to Q1 minus W, and that's nothing but 450 kilojoule per second minus 33.56 kilojoule per second, and that is equal to 416.4 kilojoule per second, and that's approximately equal to 417 kilojoule per second okay and this matches with the one of the option that's given here it is the option d so option d is the correct one here so let's take a look at the next problem the statement is the vapor pressure p of a solid at temperature t is expressed by ln p so for the solid we are given the vapor pressure ln p that is equal to 23 minus 3863 divided by t this is for the solid phase okay and its liquid phase is given by ln p that is equal to actually there is a mistake here it should be instead of 1 it should be 19 okay ln p that is equal to 19 minus 3063 divided by t and this is for the liquid phase okay 
the triple point of the material is so it uh, it should be noted that a triple point a triple point the uh, the vapor pressure of solid the pressure of solid and liquid phases are equal okay so that is applying this condition we obtain 23 minus 3863 divided by t that should be equal to 19 minus 3063 divided by t okay so after solving this we obtain okay after taking lcm so we will obtain 4t that is equal to 800 which implies that t is equal to 200 okay so therefore d is the correct option here let's take a look at the next problem so it is uh, related to the free energy for the uh, photon gas inside the cavity and free energy is given uh, given by the expression f that is equal to minus a by 3 multiply by V T power 4 okay so because uh, in order to calculate the, the entropy and pressure of the uh, photon gas they are given given by so before we calculate let's see how uh, we can evaluate the uh, these two quantities okay so because we know that the Helmholtz, uh, the Helmholtz free energy is given by U minus ds okay and a small change in the Helmholtz free energy that is equal to du minus tds minus sdt okay and then replace du with uh, by making use of first of thermodynamics du that is equal to tds minus pdv so that's a replacement for du okay and then minus tds as it is and then minus sdt as it is okay so tds and tds they will cancel with each other so that means we are left with uh, minus PDV minus SDT that's the change in Helmholtz free energy so from here we can immediately define the pressure as P that is equal to minus DF by DV by keeping temperature constant and entropy is equal to minus DF by DT by keeping volume constant so with the help of these two results we can immediately evaluate the pressure and pressure uh, turns out to be equal dfy dt okay so that will give you a fact, uh, give us gives us a factor of 4 uh, t cube okay so therefore the pressure turns out to be equal to So therefore pressure will be it is minus of df by dv so minus minus will become plus so ultimately what we will obtain is so th this is basically minus a by 3 and then uh, it's d uh, p that's df by db okay and then uh, a by t, t4 and then tb by db but with negative sign okay with negative sign so negative that will become positive so that is equal to a by 3 t4 so that's the pressure now the entropy is entropy that is minus df by dt and that is equal to curly uh, minus d dt of minus a by 3 v t4 okay and uh, after performing the differentiation it comes out to be equal to 4 a by 3 v t cube okay so therefore if we just compare the results that we have obtained for the entropy it's 4a by 3 bt cube uh, and then uh, p is equal to a by 3 t4 so therefore option a is the correct one here so let's continue with the next problem uh, the statement is an ensemble of quantum harmonica oscillator is kept at a finite temperature t that is equal to 1 upon kb beta the partition function of a single oscillator with energy level n plus half h to omega is given given by okay so we are given the energy level of the uh, quantum harmonic oscillator that is the energy spectra 
is given as e n that is equal to n plus half h cut omega okay where n can take values from 0 1 2 3 and so on okay the corresponding partition function z1 that is equal to n taking value from 0 to infinity exponential minus beta en okay and that is equal to sum over all energy states n taking value from 0 to infinity exponential minus beta into n plus half <coughs> h cut omega okay so let's call this as our result one and that is equal to exponential minus beta h cut omega by 2 plus exponential minus 3 by 2 beta h cut omega plus exponential minus 5 beta h cut omega by 2 plus so on okay so here we can take common term outside exponential minus beta h cut omega by 2 multiply by 1 plus exponential minus beta h cut omega plus exponential minus 2 beta h cut omega plus so on okay and that is equal to so z1 that is equal to exponential minus beta h cut omega by 2 at as it is exponential minus beta h cut omega by 2 as it is okay so this is a series a a r with common ratio exponential minus beta h cut omega okay with infinite term so that is equal to a upon 1 minus r okay where r is the common ratio which is exponential minus beta h cut omega so if we compare our results with the option that are given to us so option a coincide with the result that we have obtained so therefore a is the correct one here so let's continue with the uh, next question which is associated with the same problem so here we are supposed to uh, find out the average number of energy quanta of the oscillator that's given by so let's first try to uh, work out the expression for the average energy first with the help of the partition function that we obtained in the previous steps, step okay so that means z1 here so the average energy is given as u that is equal to minus curly curly beta of ln z1 and that is equal to minus curly curly beta of okay by taking the logarithmic of the partition function so the first term comes out to be equal to minus beta h cut omega y2 okay and then the denominator minus ln 1 minus exponential minus beta h cut omega okay and that is equal to negative negative will cancel with each other so we will be left with h cut omega by 2 so beta will disappear so this is equal to h cut omega by 2 and then uh, for, uh, the differential of this term will give us 1 upon 1 minus exponential minus beta h cut omega into minus exponential minus beta h cut omega multiply by minus h cut omega okay and after rearranging all these terms so this is equal to uh, 1 upon exponential so now, now i am writing the the second term at the first place okay so exponential beta h cut omega minus 1 plus 1 by 2 into h cut omega so this 1 by 2 is basically from here okay so h cut omega outside okay so that is equal to n k plus 1 by 2 h cut omega where nk that's the average number of energy quanta of the oscillator nk that is equal to 1 upon exponential beta h cut omega minus 1 so therefore our correct option is exponential beta h cut omega uh, exponential beta h cut omega minus 1 so therefore a is the correct option here